Right, hello everyone. So here we are in Birdsville. We are just at the Birdsville Caravan Park. It's pretty windy today, so hopefully the audio is all good. We've done our best, but yeah, not, <laughs> not the best conditions. <laughs> we have just rolled out of the Simpson Desert. We've done the Madigan line uh, and a few little extras on top of that. And we thought we would just do a Simpson Desert wrap up and uh, sort of talk about just sort of everything, everything we sort of wish we knew uh, before we came in and maybe a few things uh, we want to talk about that I would have appreciated seeing before I went on the trip anyway. Yeah, a lot we've learnt. Yes. yes. Yeah. A lot we've learnt. Highs and lows, there's going to be a damage report in the vehicles. We're going to have a few stupid things we did, uh, how the vehicles performed. So I suppose we'll probably just get into it. Yeah. What do you reckon? Let's All go right, for it. Well, well, how about we start off with what we actually did? Yep. yep. Let's start right. off with the trip. Right. Adrian, you're the stats man. Stats. Got the stats. So from leaving Alice, our first night was at Lambert's Corner, which is 301 k's from Alice. So the total distance of the trip was 1119 kilometers. That's from Alice to Birdsville, which is something we didn't exactly know from the start. No. Nope. We were predicting originally 800. 800? Mm. From Alice to Birdsville. Yeah. Now we put a lot, we put a big factor in there for contingency, but it was very tight. <laughs> we'll get into that. It's a doozy. Yeah. yeah. So I'll go through every single night and sort of what we averaged in fuel plus speed. And that's a big thing for this one. That's a big thing for the Madigan line is the speed you're going to travel every day. So after Lambert's, we went and kept at Camp 5. Uh, you go past Old and Dardo Station, yep. pretty graded roads. Um, the station must have recently done those roads up because they were phenomenal. So we did 55 k's an hour on that day. 16.6 .6 litres, so you're not really going to hit your fuel, big fuel usage at that stage. Um, we did 308 k. The next night we camped at Camp 12. Now from 5 to 12 is where you start getting into the dunes. We hadn't really hit many dunes until the next day after Camp 5. Yeah. So yeah, from then onwards it's just dunes. And they're not, they're not massive dunes. It's quite tight, single tyre track, track. But we went up. We were 22.7, well the 79 was 22.7 litres per 100 and we averaged 20k an hour. Mm. I don't know, I don't have a scan gauge or anything in the old two hatch. So. <laughs> How many kilometres uh, was it between 5 and 12? We only did 141 for the day. Yeah. And we pulled up at, I think it was about 4.30 in the yeah, afternoon, and mind we, you. Yeah. Each day we started driving by 8, 9 o'clock, yeah. depending on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. we actually, yeah, we got going pretty early. Some mm. days we even got going at about 7.30ish, yeah. so we were, up, we were up early. Just want to mention, the, our fuel usage in LC was probably... I reckon about maybe in the worst, about 19. I, yeah. I reckon it would have been somewhere around yeah. that 18, 19. Yeah. So that 22, that's full drive engaged at that point. Yeah. The track was um, chopped, let's say. There was parts of the Madigan there that was chopped, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Definitely wasn't as, um, I suppose it was more chopped up than I was expecting yeah. at that point. Yeah. For yeah. being such a remote track. So in between 5 and 12, look, it wasn't challenging four-wheel driving. No. The track was a bit chopped up, but honestly, with low tyre pressures, uh, or correct tyre pressures, yeah. Elsie is walking up every June. I was probably 60% throttle. Maybe some of them went up to 70 or 80% throttle, but I wasn't absolutely ringing a neck. No. And it's it's not a challenging four-wheel drive, providing your tyre pressures yeah. are correct. The next day, we left Cant 12. Mm -hmm. And we went, continued on the Madigan out to Hay River, where the junction is at Hay River coming down from the Plenty. We only did 120k that day, 20 litres per 100, average speed again of 20k. Mm. Now that section of the Madigan, obviously, as you can tell, we didn't get nowhere near the k's done. Wasn't yeah. as enjoyable as no. uh, the dune driving, <laughs> yeah. which was sort of... I don't know, it was just nice, it was flow, it was just beautiful oh, that, that was, that was before. That's before the corrugations and everything as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah before the corrugations, really, yeah. anyway. That, yeah. And so, on that part of the road though, we did also start climbing back over dunes, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. We and, did a lot more the next day. And got bigger every yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we did yeah. start climbing back over dunes, which yeah. we weren't expecting to do. Yeah, well, that was interesting because we obviously headed west to east, 
Uh, so the lead, as you meant to. The lead, yeah, as you meant to. Now <laughs> you're not allowed to do the Madigan east to west. That is big point. Yep. Look, the good thing about it is is you're not going up the leeward side of the dunes, so yep. they are much easier to go up. Some of the dunes would have been a definite challenge oh. um, going yep. going if you were going west to east. Uh, there were some pretty steep steep dunes, but on the other side, generally it's all right. Uh, but when you go back on the Hay River, as we were saying, mm. you are going west to east, which is yeah. permitted. That's fine on that part of the track. But those dunes, some of them were a bit challenging. And, and that was probably uh, where I was pushing yeah. Elsie a bit yeah, more. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good bit of fun, actually, yeah. trying yeah. to yeah, get Elsie up and, and we did stop. We stopped earlier that day. Because we that was a windy day. Yeah. We were look look we were looking for shelter. We yeah. were at the point of we don't care where we stop, but we're stopping somewhere there's no wind. Yeah. It was that was a tough day. The morale was so low. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just going to share this beer because this is our last one for the trip. Rationing. Next day we went to uh, Air Creek, so that was 190k, saved fuel 19.3 liters, average 36. That's where you you continue down the Hay River and you go into the QAA. So you start going out on the more trafficked line mm. where, you, you know, you're doing call-ups for dunes to make sure that who's coming and whatnot. Yeah. And that track was very chopped up. And <sighs> on the end of the Hay River Road there, the yeah. corrugations were oh, yeah. insane. Yeah. yeah I think every track where... we did on this trip with corrugations, they progressively got worse. And we kept saying that's the worst road we've ever been on. That was the worst road. But that Hay River Road track was pretty bad. Yeah. Like, there were there were points in Elsie where we had the pressures down to like 11 in the front, sort of 17 in the rear. So like really low. Mm. Mm. And uh, it was Steering still... was super heavy. And it was still like sometimes I was thinking, I'm doing damage to this car. But yeah, Elsie really copped mm. some corrugations. And it doesn't feel good in a 40, I'll tell you that much. It, yeah. it, you feel... Very bad for the car. Um, but, but the QAA line, that was by far the worst chopped up. Mm, there yeah. had been cars towing trailers. You can see drawbar marks in the sand. There's so many moguls from people running wrong tyre pressures. Yeah. Look, you're hearing it over the channel of people taking massive run-ups and yeah. you're going to need speed for this one. And Elsie's just chugging along yeah. up to the thing. You, you, yeah. yeah, we yeah. did a lot of dunes. Well, you drove, but we did a lot of dunes just in first gear and literally because of the bumps, just crawled on up them mm. and popped over the other side. Yeah. Again, though, correct tyre pressures, yeah. first gear, wasn't even in low range, yeah. crawled up, no worries, and there were cars that we could hear over the line and we saw them, much newer cars, modern cars. Yeah. We're towing a trailer and... They should have been breezing up these mm. and they were getting stuck at every dune. Yeah. And I'm just putting it down to incorrect tyre pressures, probably not very good throttle control. No. Uh, but uh, it, the thing about the QAA line is you go from Birdsville to the corner and I'm guessing people probably go out, come to Birdsville, they, they leave the vans here and that and, you know, mm. and they go out for a day and they go to the corner and try and get back and they're probably... It probably just not running correct tyre pressures. Yeah. And so it's, that was, and you wouldn't have wanted it to be any busier, hey? We no, were, God, no. Yeah. Mm. And it, it's not, they're not challenging dunes. Like in the 79, it was second gear, high range. I would say 70% of them were actually in two wheel drive because we were really on fuel, can save it, fuel saving yeah. mode. <laughs> so I was trying to save as much fuel as could. Um, and that's without being anything stupid and ripping up tracks and doing all that. That mm. is just literally coaxing to the top of a dune and rolling Popping down. Over. Yeah. yeah. On the, just to give you an idea of how busy it was, we saw four cars for our whole Madigan line mm. run. Yeah. Uh, and then on the QAA line, we would have seen, I would have... 20 plus. Oh. Yeah. I reckon even 40. Ooh, yeah. 40 cars, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a group of six, four. It was, four, it was, two, yeah. Two, it was yeah. busy. Yeah. Yep. And then we did the final dash. To Birdsville this morning. Should we get on to the fuel situation and why yeah. it happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should. So you've probably seen in our videos that um, we were running out of fuel along the Madigan line. How much fuel did we take? And then we'll get on to how much fuel Adrian took. So I've got a photo of the Bowser here. Oh, I, I'm, we took about 200 litres. I thought it was like 190. 190, yeah. yeah. 190. So I had yeah. I had 230. Yeah. With a lot of contingency thought. 
<laughs> so we had bought, we had all researched. We thought the Madigan was 800 Ks. We did 1100. And everyone's average fuel consumption was what? Averaging between 160 to 180 litres. Mm. So we took 190, Adrian took 230. So mm, we yeah. thought we were sweet and we mm. had heaps of spare. Yeah. yeah. So we got to Ear Creek. That was as far as we'd push Elsie. She yeah. was basically on vapours. And we didn't really want to bleed bleed the injectors. It's not a big job on that. So you could have done it. I mean, how far were we from Birdsville there? 59k. Yeah. It was, and we probably would have camped there anyway, to be honest. Um, mm. But we did the dash. So Matt and I did the dash from there to meet the closing hours of the Birdsville service station. Yeah. To meet it by five. We got there. Yeah, we got there. It was close though. Very close. All right. So even uh, adding on our little jaunt to the centre, which mm -hmm. added on 120 k's to the trip, was it? Uh, 72. 72. 72 yeah. all up. Yep. Okay, 72 all up. So not much on top of our 800 we were expecting. Yeah. Because we had, because look, we do our research, Adrian really does his research for a trip, and we both came to the same consensus that was 800 Ks. We'd mm. seen on mm. multiple sources, yep. 800 Ks from Birdsville Alice. to Alice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just everywhere. That's what everyone was saying. And we said, oh, sweet. So like, look, a bit stupid of us. We didn't actually completely yeah. add up all the yeah. Ks. We should have added up on HEMA yeah. all the Ks, but we didn't. Yeah, so if you are looking at doing uh, a Madigan line run or a Simpson run, really double check your Ks, go on a HEMA maps and just mm. add up exactly on your track what you're going to be doing because, yeah. uh, look, we were all right in the end, but yeah. we were it really down close. to the wire there. It was close. Also, we couldn't fill up at Fink. Yeah. So, yeah. and with a lot of COVID, border closures, everything else, we couldn't go to Mount Dare. We couldn't fill up in Fink. So we had to do from Alice to Birdsville. That was our option. Yeah. So, and so that's where we think we went wrong. We yeah. think people say they've gone from Alice to Birdsville, 800 Ks, but they've filled up in Fink. Fink to Birdsville, we calculated was 770 Ks. Yeah, or something, something like that. Yeah. So that's where we think we went wrong. People yeah. usually get fuel in Fink and then continue on, which if we could have done that, would have been fun. Oh. Yeah. Would have breezed it, yeah. no yeah. worries. So now, there, there is a chance we could have done this. Mm. We yeah. worked it out. We worked it out. Both yeah. vehicles could have made it in the one run. But we, we would have literally, like, I'm I'm literally talking, we'd have been rolling in with maybe, like, yeah. a litre. Like, Adrian rolled yeah. in, what, like, with 23 litres? Yeah. After, like, the dash in? Yeah. And, and then, 79's aren't the greatest for getting everything out of the tank, and it's not good for them either. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's got a return line. Yeah. It's hot diesel back yeah. into the tank. Yeah. Yeah. We the put, go, yeah, we so. put 20 litres in at Air Creek this morning, and then by the time we got in, you put... I don't know how much you put in worth of fuel, but we ended yeah. up, we think we probably had 10, to, 10, 10 left. litres left. To get yeah. that last couple of Ks over the dunes and big red and everything. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> big yeah, red. <laughs> so um, it was really lucky we had the contingency. We had our sort of 40-ish extra litres we thought we were not going to need. We did need it. Mm. So if you're going to do a Simpson trip, just really make sure you got the right fuel. Very lucky we had our contingency and we were yeah. sort of, over prepared for what we thought we were doing. Mm. So which ended up being what we needed <laughs> to yeah. do what yeah. we wanted. Yeah. I'll probably move on to the next thing we almost ran out on this trip, <laughs> which is a really stupid oh. one. And I feel like I genuinely feel like a bit of an idiot. And I'm just telling people I have the option of not telling you online, but mm. I am. Uh, because look, I just want people to not run into the same issue, essentially. Not that I don't think many people would. All right, around Australia, Holly and I, we carried spare oil with us at all times. Every single trip we've done in LC, we have carried spare oil. We have always had it. This trip, we were just running out of space in LC, and I, my oil container is a five litre jerry. And even if I just had a two litre container or one litre anything, just something, just a small little oil container would have been fine, but I just couldn't fit it. And I was like, you know what? Elsie never uses any oil. Oh, like, <laughs> Elsie's so good with oil, like, you know. We've El never needed it before. Never needed it before, and I thought, you know what, she'll be fine. Gave her a fresh service, yeah. topped her right up. So I was good to go. To the point where I didn't even really check it. <laughs> so we were in Alice for days, didn't check it. We did all, like, we're doing all the other things. We are doing visuals of cars. Oh, we would yeah. walk around, do visuals, check things, all that. Didn't check the oil. I, I was blowing out air filters anyway. Got to Geographical Centre of Australia, thought, oh, I might check the oil. Pulled it out. I'm like, shit, I'm half, 
I'm half full. I was like, where's half my oil? It was from? less than half. It was less than half. <laughs> I was like, look, two H's do love oil. They like mm. like running a bit of oil. They need it. Anyway. And, they, and then that day. They do have uh, the um, anti-rust protection on them. Yeah. When they're yeah. 40 years of service, they have the anti-rust yeah. protection on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we um, then drove to the Madigan Line first camp that night. Uh, out past the old Endado station. I checked the dipstick again and she was dead set on low, like touching low. And I was like, far out. We've got a couple of hundred Ks of the Madigan to do. Mm. Like, could be tough ball driving. I might be revving this thing. Thought, far out. This is this is not great. And I just, in the back, was in the back of my mind all day doing the dunes. And look, she was running fine and all that. But then look, we met one of the four cars that we met on the road, this bloke and I just said look mate I really feel like an idiot but do you have any oil that I could put in and she, he said mate I got one liter I'll just carry one liter with me he's like you can borrow it no worries anyway put the one liter in and it just gave me that little bit of little bit of a peace of mind it still definitely wasn't full by any means but it was just a bit more and I thought sweet we're good to go so look I said I was going to bring oil in my prep, prep video didn't bring it and I needed it <laughs> yep what can happen will happen I mean, everything else, I didn't yeah. need any other thing. I didn't need anything else that I really brought with me. Like, you know, two spares. I didn't have any flats, no flats. Any, no. Like, didn't need any filters. Uh, well, I don't know, hoses. that might be a good yeah. segue to lead on to mm. damage report and maybe things we sort of fixed up on yeah. mainly the 40. And <laughs> a little bit, of a, little bit of a fix on the way. We'll, oh, we'll, yeah. Well, well, on that as well, it's like, I don't think I packed anything that I wouldn't have taken. Is there things I would have taken? No. Yeah. More beer. <laughs> More beer. Yeah. I had to scavenge off Matt <laughs> last night. I, I owed Adrian a couple of beers. He ended up giving John a bottle of one of oh, one of yes. his bottles of wine as a payment for the oil because he didn't drink beer, so he gave him a very nice wine. Might be a good segue for your wine, actually. Adrian's a uh, winemaker, owns Obsession Wines up in Tumbarumba. Mate, what have we got on the table here? We have our Tempranillo and Chardonnay. So all cool climate, quite contrary to the desert here. And it sort of leads into where we started this trip, where this mm. trip prep come about. Yeah, another great segue. <laughs> yeah, with so many segues. So uh, Adrian's from Tumbarumba, um, or he lives at Tumbarumba, has the farm there and his winery. And uh, it snows up there. Snowed up is his farm and he sort of, he sent us a message one day, said, come up and have a look at the snow. Mm. We'll go for a four-wheel drive, bring Elsie. So he brought Elsie along and, yeah, we went for a little four-wheel drive in the snow. Yeah. And we got to <laughs> top of this hill. Awesome yeah, it was fun. top mm. of Mount Granite. So we're about 1,500 metres. There's a good foot of snow. Yeah. And we start talking about trips and then it sort of leads into... Yeah, places we want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Simpson Desert. <laughs> in the oh, snow. We're freezing cold in the middle of the snow. And we go, and do you want to do the Simpson Desert? And Adrian's like, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And look, Adrian is an invaluable asset this trip because very handy bloke, knows 40s inside out, uh, especially very well prepared uh, car, brings lots of tools. A lot of the, you know. Very kind of, handy. Very handy. He owns the exact same year model HJ47 yeah. as us. So he knows him inside out. Uh, so that was fantastic. So, yeah. Funny little segue yeah. there. So, sorry, I've opened up the temp Tempanillo here. I might have a little... So you can grab Adrian's wine online. We will put uh, his uh, website down in the description below. Um, and yeah, it's bloody delicious. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, definitely jump on, support him. We love his product, so you will too. So Damage yeah, report. We'll damage, report. damage report. There's yeah. some funny things on here. Yeah. Start with 79 because the sporty list is a little longer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So current known damage on 79, a remote resi bracket on the BP-51s snapped off. Oh, that's yum. A little bit to do with corrugations and a little bit to do with excessive contact with the tyres on the top of the guard, <laughs> let's just say that. One aerial that's come loose, now that is because the sand flag had to be attached to that after the sand flag bracket broke. It's not to do with the sand flag itself, it was to do with the bracket on the platform, absolutely bent and that rather than the flag upright, we had lay down <laughs> flag many times. So it got cable tied and strapped to a GME aerial. The GME aerial hold up really well, except the excessive force of a sand flag wasn't that great for it. 
And the sand flags we had were quite heavy. Yeah, they were. Compared yeah. to the other ones. Yeah, they so. were good. Good unit. Good though. unit. Yeah, yeah. Bush yeah. Ranger. Bush yeah. Ranger yeah. sand flags if you need a good sand flag. Yeah. A bit more expensive, but good. Just will last you. Yeah. 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 They won't last um, What else is their damage? I'm Hill just looking. Oh. You had a few parties in the back. Yeah, there was a lot of parties in the back. A um, few new items got put into the, the packing of the back of the canopy, which is not normally how I'd have things because there were a lot of jerry cans. They were strapped down, but there was a lot of loo semi-loose items. They had a bit of a party. Fuel Doctor was one of them. Uh, it went everywhere. <laughs> um, what else went? It? Oh, what else went everywhere? Body wash. Oh, body wash. <laughs> Canopy smells good, mind you. Really good. <laughs> that got rid Very of the fuel fresh. doctor problem. <laughs> body wash on fuel doctor. Fixes every time. Mm. That's what Elsie needs. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a segue to Elsie's. Yeah. So we also yeah. had a bottle of fuel doctor blob. It's annoying because it's 40 bucks a bottle. Yeah. $45 a bottle. It's of like fuel liquid doctor. gold. Yeah. We went over this bump. Um, look, on the QAA just, just line. QAA yeah. came out of nowhere and it really, my that hand got air. I watched my whole setup in the back of the troop just lift up, slam down, like slammed. And I was like, oh, and then the fridge. So the fuel up. doctor was sitting next to the fridge, yeah. and yeah, the fridge has jumped up. The fuel doctor slipped under, and the fridge has landed on it and just exploded it. <laughs> we had fuel doctor on the roof, on the back windows, all on the cushions. And yeah, half our bottle of fuel doctor gone. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was one thing that went, but actual damage to Elsie. Um, all right. <clears throat> So the, well, the exhaust pretty much was full. That was before. Fell off, but that was before. So we fixed that now. The, the fix actually held up fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was fine. Um, one of the guards, uh, it scrubbed out. The wheel hit the guard so bad and it scrubbed. It actually bent the body out a little bit. So you can see the spot welds. Yeah. So it's a wide body 47 now uh, on one side. It's perfect. Uh, which is good. Um, I ran into successive dirt mounds when I was trying to park, when I was trying to park the car camping, it was, morale was low, I was angry trying to park the car, wasn't getting much help from anyone and <laughs> I snapped one off and completely, almost snapped the other one off so both my mud guards are pretty much, will put cactus on yeah. the car. What else happened there? Oh, there's a, there's a bush, there's a worn bush on the front but that's just general fatigue. Yeah, well, <laughs> what we've right. driven on I think it's yeah. held up pretty well. Probably the starter the, motor. Just want to mention what happened to the starter motor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it has a centrifugal uh, oil spinner on the the top above the oil filter, which is from the early two H's. And we're not sure Look, if there should be a clip. If yeah. you're a, if you're a two H nut mm. and you know, yeah. do the caps on the top of the centrifugal spinner yep. need a clamp because. That ended up leaking out and it actually, uh, oil went into the starter motor and then the starter motor is full of oil. And so we had to get that taken out and cleaned up and it was starting fine after that. Um, so that was a bit of an issue, but again, that was before the Madigan line. That was before, yeah. Um, what else happened to Elsie um, on the trip? Lights. Lights, mm -hmm. that's a good one. So we're driving to the Geographical Centre of Australia and it was getting dark. Uh, I've got steady spotlights on the front, the Type X Pros. Turned them on, but the corrugations were that bad. Like I'm talking like just shaking things to bits that the lights were flicking on and off uh, re really rapidly, like with every corrugation. So I don't know if that was uh, some, anyway, they just went off all together. I think it's probably a relay yeah. or something that's yeah. that's cooked it. We've, um, well, look, we've checked all the connections before it's said mm. they're all connected we just haven't changed the relay and because yeah. we don't drive at night yeah, yeah exactly. we avoid it don't yeah. drive at night other yeah. steadies work all right the homage um mm. seven inch homage there so and they are bright one thing. yeah yeah they're they good bright yeah they're, they're really good actually yeah. they're good um but besides that our build out in the back though is pretty it's, well yeah it's i mean it was a rough. homemade yeah. pack job it's mm. it's looking pretty worse where other damage report for elsie Bush stripes, both vehicle bush stripes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Elsie's got a lot, actually, now that I'm looking at her. Um, uh, what else? We've got a couple of... we got cracks in the paint, in our paint job. Yeah. Um, everything's Elsie. just a bit looser. Just yeah. bolts need tightening. Just... She's copped it, but... Actually, oh, your door. Your door handle. Oh, my door handles sort of stopped opening. Bush stripes is a good one because I've done a lot of remote tracks 
and the spin effects that's out there is quite on the Manigan mm. is quite low. So if you're thinking you've got brush bars or a wider canopy and it's not going to hit your doors, it does. Yeah. Mm. It absolutely does. I'm just looking at Bertha. <laughs> yeah, she's. So if you've got a real precious rig and you're, yeah. and you're concerned about it, concerned yeah. about bush drops, get a ceramic coat or something. Hundred percent. Or yeah, yeah some sort Wrap of protection. <laughs> Wrap it. Wrap. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, or yeah. just cop it and just yeah, have live it with as, it. Have it as um yeah. Adventure you only hear it, you only hear it for one day and then the days afterwards it just becomes white noise. Really, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Leading into it. that, we might go into vehicle performance, but look, besides that, mm. nothing major went wrong no. with Elsie. No, she just. Chugged along, yep. didn't get hot. Just I don't know, nothing went wrong. No, just she's fine. No, nah. and, like and she smashed it for for the abuse. Yeah. Oh yeah, that she's copped. It's just general little nip and tucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's a forty-year-old vehicle <laughs> yeah. that has been flogged for forty years. Obviously, we pulled it out of a paddock, been like n neglected for twelve years. Not, I don't think it was ever serviced once, <laughs> and then we. Did a hack job resto on a shed and then we drove it across the simpson we drove it across yeah. the simpson i mean i did really like i did things so i did all the bearings rebuilt swivel hubs new clutch tie rod steering yeah yeah yep. tie rod tie rod ends and the steering uh which were all done at petters new steering dampener which is unreal in the sand adrian oh my god what did you say about it look driven a lot of 40s i jumped in lc took it for a spin and there's different squeaks to what you're used to because there are 40 squeaks and you know where they come from on yours, <laughs> but they were coming from different spots and I didn't know that. But the steering, responsiveness. Mm. Mm. Really oh. good in the sand, I found it. Uh, I found it good on road, didn't wander, but in the sand, really good to do those mm. kind of micro adjustments as you're floating yeah. around the sand. Loved it. And, it, and it was, you didn't have 60 mil of free play before when you're cresting a dune you had to do a hard right. There wasn't... You're not doing these ones. You were already into it mm. yeah. and you'd already made that turn, which was good. And I'll actually probably point out, I, I'm not like being like, oh, my car is better than your car and this car is whatever. But Elsie probably oh. handled the Madigan, the actual bumps, whether it's something to do with, 100%. The, whether it's yep. something to do with the wheelbase mm. or I don't know, mm. maybe it's a bit more modern vehicle and the bumps are, are I don't know, I don't know what. Yeah. But I was watching the 79 and that was really... Bucking, that was but we called a bouncing Bertha. Bertha. Bucking like a her. Oh, um, the Try, Elsie was really yeah. rolling. I don't know if it's just the suspension shot at it. Look, I think the leaves need to reset in the rear, yeah, yeah they're pretty straight now. And it's n there's not all that much to the bumps, let's no. put it that way, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was probably a reason why I was yeah. rolling over them so nice because my suspension wasn't really working, yeah. but yeah, it, <laughs> was was the, it was the Falcon tires that were doing the work, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Falcon, Falcon Wild Peaks can recommend. <laughs> Um, but yeah, how'd you go with the 79 Look, in the desert? There were sections on the Madigan I absolutely despised in a sense because the chopped up bumps didn't really suit the 79. There was, I was probably going trying to go too fast. I was meeting all the humps. So there was a lot of rocking back and forth and Bertha's is a big girl. Mm. She's under, she's well within GVM, but she's heavy. Um, and it doesn't do you any favors on tracks like that. And the suspension I have set for just general touring. So a lot of corrugation. Come to a corrugation or a oh, high speed thing fine. and yeah. I'm gone. Uh, oh, washouts, yeah, just straight over the top. You don't worry about it. But mm. in that sort of lower speed, second gear, constant yeah, humping, yeah. you got a bit of secondary movement. Now, yes, you probably could adjust that in the shocks, but with such varied terrain, mm. yeah. yeah. What? The way the 40 is set up, for like the way the way the two H revs mm. yep. in first and second, yep. it was just awesome. It was just perfect. Chugging along and yep. just just flexing over the bumps. It was yeah. It was yeah, perfect. I was probably that gear transition of like what, when you drove it as well it was first gear's too high, second gear you're labouring a little bit. Yeah. Like there's still the power there to push through, but yeah. you're probably using more fuel than you should be because yeah. you're just labouring the motor. Whereas yeah. we just sat in pretty much second gear the whole, most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Where, where if it, as we said, any corrugations, I was envious because sh shocking, <laughs> shocking in else. Like yeah. just uncomfortable as you can, you, you can imagine anyway. So we'll probably move on to now. It's a trip you hear about a lot. The Madigan line, the Simpson. It's one of those 
big ticket bucket list. You know, it's, it, it's up there with the Cape. It's yeah. up there with yeah. those, you know, those kind of drives. Fraser, you know, you, it, people always talk about it. But then oftentimes, you know, you do these things. Does it meet your expectations? And I, don't know, I suppose we'll go through it. Uh, Adrian, we'll start with you. Did it meet your expectation? Yes and no. Yes for the remoteness. Like, the Madigan is a very remote track. It's an easy track, but it's remote, so you have to be well prepared. And there were many nights there where we've stayed, we stayed at places, and it was fantastic. There was bird life, it was just, it was really nice. The remoteness was perfect. Was the track, did the track feel as remote as in my head of what I thought it was? No. Mm. The QAA and the other parts of the Simpson, that just reminds me of, in a sense, Cape York in the busy season. It's what I expected. Yeah, I'll probably agree with pretty much every, everything Adrian said. Actually, look, I loved it. It was it was it was unreal fun. Um, and I think a really funny thing about being out on these trips is there's there's really high highs <laughs> and there's low lows. Like when we got into camp uh, just after Hay River, we pulled off and found this clump of trees that just sheltered us from the wind because it was windy. I had because we had to have the windows down in Elsie because it doesn't have aircon or anything. <laughs> Holly and I had dirt and grit. Like our arms are red, our faces are red, and the track wasn't that enjoyable that section. And yeah. then I mm. broke the the mud flaps off, and we were just low lows, just not much yeah. fun. How's morale at camp? It's pretty low. And then you know you get times like when we wrote, woke up in in at Lambert Centre. Oh. Yeah. Geographical Centre of Australia, we woke up. And we just this, sat there and watched sunrise. This sunrise and there were these birds and there would have just, I couldn't count the different varieties of birds and I've never heard them before. And there's these little wildflowers with the most delicate grasses you can imagine. Mm. Mm. And we were just sitting there just listening to these birds and it was like magic. It was literally half an hour. We were yeah. sitting there with our coffees, just, we're all staring at the sun and just listening. It was, yeah. it was amazing. And that's probably, yeah, one of the most special mm. moments. Cause I think when you think of the center of Australia, you think of nothing. Like I yeah. didn't think mm. there was going to be anything out there. So yeah, it was nice that there was actually, I'm not sure if it's due to the rain that there was wildflowers and stuff, but yeah, it was pretty special. I mean, so did, yeah, meeting expectations, like, was it a challenging track? Definitely it was a challenge and you're out there for a couple of days and you really start to feel, yeah. you start, you get, you get a bit weary, you know, weary after it. And, you know, it's really nice rolling into Birdsville at the end. But the, the most challenging thing about the track, if you've done a bit of four driving, the four driving's fine. As I mm. said, providing your tire pressures yeah. are correct. No challenge at all. The biggest challenge is just the remoteness and how yeah. the distance and if something goes really wrong, like if you have a catastrophic failure, gearbox, your engine goes something, and you are stuck, it's going yeah. to be, it could be a 10 grand recovery bill. Um, if not more. To come, if not, yeah, someone to come pick you up. But you also have to be okay with doing 20 Ks an hour for three days yeah, in a row. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you get yeah. bored of the same yeah. thing, you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. Mm. Because it is very, yeah. very repetitive, I mean, I, isn't I don't, it? I don't, like, there's 1,100 sand dunes in the Simpson, and we yeah. would have done most of them probably yeah yeah and we crossed them and then we the came other. back across yeah. them and then we crossed yeah. them again <laughs> it's funny though even though we were probably driving for like six plus hours a day yeah um it didn't feel like that because it's kind of it's kind of odd i don't know you mm. kind of yeah it doesn't feel like the highway you know no. when you're on there sitting on the highway for four hours like it's kind of varied or there's something happening or every june i don't know and it's you're taking it in as well you're and like it, yeah and you know what never got yeah. old uh when you crested the big dunes, yeah. because you're on the, the side that's not as steep, you're sort of slowly gaining altitude in this dune, and then you hit this crest and it drops off, you can just see out into the desert. Oh. Remember those really high ones mm. when you're just up the top and just looking out? Oh, you great. almost think the dunes have finished. So you crest one and you look out and you go, it's flat, there's nothing mm. else. Until you drop down and there's you start 900 yeah. more to yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hold. Did it meet your expectations? Personally, I thought it was going to be more remote. I didn't feel remote until the night that we were camped behind that sand hump in um, on the Hay River Road. I think that's because I had an expectation of going along the Madigan and not seeing anyone for three days. 
because that's what again what you read you don't see people for eight days if people take a longer time to do it so I think it didn't meet my expectations in that but after doing the Madigan and then the QAA line back into Birdsville I am so glad we did the Madigan line versus the QAA line or eventually we'll want to do the French line but I think we want we we will want to try and time that with yeah. Well, the French line will be convenient because you can go yeah. west. Oh, sorry, east to west. Yeah. Whereas sure, Manning, right. you can't. So you've got to start in Alice, and you've got to go through to Birds. Which for us, we all live in New South Wales, so it's a big way to like it was days driving to get up to Alice to start the trip of the Madigans. And so, we couldn't go through South Australia. Exactly. That was our big issue. We had to go up and around rather than just the quickest but, possible. But personally, way. like I actually wouldn't have have it any other way because the, mm. the good thing is you start in Alice your fuel's cheap your stocking up's yep. really cheap yep. yeah so great start there go check out the geographical centre it's great fun and then you do the whole line you and you get lighter these, along the way yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, your car gets lighter as you go so everything gets easier um, and you've got all your trials and tribulations on the way and then you finish up with Big Red and then just after Big Red you've got Birdsville Get your yep. shower, stay at the caravan park like we are now, and we just had lunch at the pub and a couple of beers and bloody hell, oh, it's nothing ever tastes we'll be, sweeter. We'll be patrons there oh, a we, little later we're on. We're going back. We're, <laughs> getting, we're yeah. getting blinded, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll have to talk about Big Red. Big Red. Well. Can I also just mention how much like supplies and stuff we brought? Hmm. So oh, like That's actually... For like water. (laughs) So you know how much fuel we took for the trip? In terms of water, we carried our 40 litre tank that we have in the Troopy, 20 litres in the collapsible, 5 litres in the 5 litre, and and then 10, a 10 litre sack from Woolworth. So what's that? 75. 75 litres. So we carried 75 litres, your tank 70. Yeah, I've got 70 and then I always have like 10 or so of bottles. Um, We definitely carried a lot more water than we needed. But again, yeah, we probably did. have about yeah. 30 litres left, yeah. I reckon, mm. in our tank. And we, uh, had... we had a couple of showers. We did yeah. shower. Yeah. 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 And we use five litres to shower, so 15 litres in shower water. Mm. Um, I mean, well, how many days yeah. were we on the track all up from Alice? Oh, we left six. Alice Monday night and we got into Birdsville today. And, and we had excess food, to be honest. We, have we have so much food. But we ate so but well. But not we a, ate well, yeah. Yeah, not a bad thing, though, because you come into Birdsville and the, there's only a general store at the service station here. Yeah. I assumed there was going to be some sort of uh, supermarket mm. or grocer Same or extent. something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, the food like that isn't really a big issue. Mm. But, yeah, like Adrian said, just bring more beer. Yeah, bring more beer. <laughs> big Red. Yeah. Yeah. Big Red. Well, can we talk about my sand dune? My oh, Big yes. Red? <laughs> yes. Yes. I did a Big Red sand Holly. dune. Well, not, not only did you do a dune. Now, it should be said that Holly did... A bit of driving on the Manigan. And yeah, about 50k. Um, a bit less, about oh, probably 40k. Yeah. Did pretty much a whole day's driving. Yeah, I was following in the 79, and there is not one bit of hesitation with this girl. She <laughs> is straight into every dune. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool because I wasn't yeah. following. I was yeah. like, that. You were setting your it, own. Yeah, it, yeah. Got, it got easier Boy though as front, we went. Because the flag had kind of. Yeah, <laughs> that's when I broke the bracket. So yeah, yeah, broke the bracket. Yeah. So the forty had to go in front with the sand flag, and look, you got to remember, like our pressures are right down, four mm. speed, no power steering, like heavy steering with the with the pressures on thirty threes, fat thirty threes. It's heavy steering. Like I struggle to turn the bloody yeah. thing. And mm. Holly's up there, and she's smashing. Oh yeah. It. She's so. Still... Oh, has, yeah. yeah. So um. <laughs> Doing my June, Matt jumped out of the car. Is a bit concerned yeah. that he jumped out of the car and I had to do it myself. What did I try first? Second. Second gear. Low. Low range. Low range. Low range. Yeah. Didn't make it up. Reverse down, and I was saying to Matt, I haven't told you this shit, Adrian. As I was reversing down, I was literally just following your signals. I wasn't using any of my yeah. mirrors. I was just completely following what Adrian was yeah. saying. So it was good that he directed me correctly, got down the bottom, couldn't get it into high range. So Adrian came and jumped in the car with me. And then it was good because he was able to talk me through how to throttle control. And then, yeah, got up it. And it was actually a bit of a double dune. So you had to go up, yeah, kind of do a I bit of a turn. Double, and yeah. as I turn, I lost the wheel. Adrian grabbed for it. I hit my arm on the one stone, grabbed yeah. it back and then got over the second dune. That wheel so. really rips around. Oh. Oh. And it'll oh. fry your arm out. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it hurts. So I didn't... That was enough June driving for me. I didn't want to. <laughs> you got to remember that wasn't a normal June because that was a uh, 
uh, east, east to, to west. west because that was after the Hay River. So that was on the steep sides yeah. of the dune. Yeah. And that was a that was a steep dune. Like and that Adrian w- in the 79 was like, oh, yeah. like gave it some mumbo. Like yeah. you, you yeah. had to actually yeah, drive I got, it I, to get I had to drive it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's on the Manigan. So it's less traveled. So you've got no compaction. The only compaction is really rain. Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> probably one thing that worked in our favor, it was earlier. So it wasn't yeah. as hot. Tires a bit colder and yeah. the sand's a bit cooler as well. Yeah. So yeah. that's. But now let's talk about Big Red. Big Red at the end. I think we should summarize Big Red. Now, there's yeah, four please. with a sort of a, a sidetrack on Big Red. They basically, far left, it sort of goes far left, hardest, second yeah. hardest, and then it sort of goes down to the other. So you can still have the achievement of doing Big Red uh, based on your car. Yeah. Basically? Yeah. 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 yeah, there's yeah, there's and you're, progressively yeah. harder sections. Yeah, we the, said the far right are very easy. We had to do one to go get fuel. They're kind of they're <laughs> not too bad at the start, and they just but there's this the, the end. It just gets steep, very sand soft down. sand, yeah. and a bit of a turn, and that's yeah because you've lost all your momentum by then. So you just sort of got to rely on power, yeah. tire yeah. pressures. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. So I'll tell you about Elsie's approach first. So. I first tried it in first high, didn't work. Then I tried, uh, pretty sure I went second and then I tried to change to first, didn't work. Mm. And then I went first low, didn't work. But that was the highest we got, wasn't it? Yeah, and that was the highest we got. So then pretty much I went down, said I'm letting the air out of the tires. So I'm talking, I had like like eight, eight, in the eight front. seven in the front, and like ten in the back. So like nothing. And then I put it in first low. Obviously no run up because first low on a forty is <laughs> is walking <a> speed. <laughs> it's tractor. First low and like it's just so hilarious because everyone gets run ups for big red and they get a big yeah. piece of momentum. I just st- start at the base and like, <laughs> started going, and then we just. Went up it. Yeah. You and literally then, tracked it up it. Yeah, tracked it tracked up. Her up. And then, uh, and then I will let Adrian tell him about his approach, and then I'll tell him about my yeah. second approach. Yeah. So that was I went on the second hardest one. Yeah. Adrian was determined for the hardest. I was determined after doing the previous night before we'd done the fuel run. I possibly was a little bit uh, overzealous in thinking that how easy it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Though you were looking at it and you were saying, oh, I'm a bit nervous. Yeah, I was. I was like looking at it and there's this double pump and it went up to the top and I was like, that looks really soft and that looks steep. I set off in high range, four wheel drive, second gear, nearly to the top and then just lost power, bogged down. Didn't turn the traction control off on a 79, (laughs) reverse back. (laughs) Attempt number two, traction control off this time, almost so close Mm. to bridging the top. And that's not massive run up, that's second gear. Third attempt, very confident this time. Elsie's up the top on this other path. I'm, I have to put these new garden sheds somewhere up on the podium somewhere. So I, low range, third, third gear, I think it was, up and up to the top. And that's no diff locks, none of that, just, Full drive, low range. Yeah. And it was good. I was a fair bit of horsepower behind it though. Yeah. Mm. You had it on full power? I had it on full power. Adrian's had a tune up. Yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a few Newton meters. <laughs> <behind it there. laughs> yeah. A few more than else. And it was it was incredibly soft at the start. I don't that track I don't think had been used no. for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well I think many people have probably been up it for a yeah. while. Yeah. And then and then after that, I yep. said, well, Elsie's got to get up that. Yep. So I went down that track. Because we had to pick up a camera. <laughs> pick up the camera. And yep. I turned around. Again, first low, same tactic. And I'm, I I was revving this 2H. What a, what a 2H is red line at? Five grand? I don't know. I don't know. They, re- they hot yeah. it. I reckon I was... I was on, I was valve bouncing. Yeah, absolutely. No oil. <laughs> absolutely valve bouncing. Yeah. And... I just started at the base and again, eh, just started going up. And it got to this point. What did you say, Hull? There was a point decent ways down. Yeah, three, that, three I thought, quarters away. that I thought you were going to stop at. And yeah. it, see, it looked like it was starting. 
And then, I don't know, it just... The tracked them heritage. Over, yeah. The heritage. The 40 the heritage. Spirit, and the, the souls of the Japanese engineers mm. just blew me up this yeah. hill, I think. And uh, it just it kept going. It did. <laughs> got all the way. And I, and I was so happy in the moment that LC just did it, but so gutted at the same point that the 40 just did it. So uh, get up. Yeah, there, was a, there was actually a fair few dunes uh, that we were doing the east to west and uh, that LC, it was just hilarious. Like, <laughs> yeah. everyone's rooting for LC. We're out there. Like, yeah. Adrian gets out to watch LC up. <laughs> yeah. And there was a couple that I was in first high, and LC just got to this point where I would have probably been doing, like, <laughs> under a thousand <laughs> RPM. Yeah. And then a two has gone. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna stop. Yeah. I'll keep my foot flat though, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> she just picks up and keeps going. I just I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Elsie does this little bob and she's nearly bogged down stall point. And then it goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. Yeah. It's such a good way to finish the trip, Big Red. Yeah. You're rolling to Birdsville. You're on cloud nine. And yeah, just have a lunch. Have have some lunch. Have a feed. And have, have a, a wash. shower. Oh, yeah. so good. And uh, yeah, look. That's that's the Simpson trip. What's next, Adrian? Oh. We're thinking. Oh. You know what we're thinking? Canning stock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Canning, Canning stock. stock. Bit more of the west, if we yeah. can get into the west. Yeah, it's Kimberley. very. It is very Kimberley. hard to yeah. plan oh, at Kimberley. the moment. Kimberley, beautiful. Yeah. Canning stock would be a good one. Like we, <laughs> we prepare a lot and probably didn't cover it. We pre prepare a lot. There's probably nothing we cannot fix on Elsie unless it throws a rod out of the block. Basically, yeah. yeah. Canning will be good diesel preparation for, for canning. Yeah. We won't run short on the canning. Yeah. <laughs> no way. We might yeah. have some fun tricks for that one. Yeah. 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 In the form of Adrian's brother. Yeah. And With a four a by four truck. Truck. So anyway. Yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. <laughs> fun things happening. Anyways, yeah. guys, look, I'll probably wrap up the wrap up. Mm. Uh, really hope you enjoyed that. We loved it. If you've been thinking about getting out and doing the Madigan, uh, I'd say main points is it's not a technically challenging track. Correct eye pressures, you're going to do it. Just you've got to be prepared. You've got to have a very well serviced vehicle. And you've got to be a bit handy if something goes wrong. You've just got to roll with the punches, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's it just wears you out a bit. But man, the, hot, the, the highs are so good. Yeah. And the reward. And it's just fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's just being out remote. And when I sent the drone up and seeing oh the sand dunes gosh. and the sunset yeah. and sunrise, like... The, the memories you'll make from a trip like that mm. uh, prices. Yeah. 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 It was unreal. All right, guys. We're going to go to the Burzville pub and we're <laughs> going to spend a lot of money at the bar. Mm. Support the local economy. Support the local economy <laughs> out in Queensland here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much. See ya.